what would you change in your life? What if you could unleash the miraculous in your everyday life? Experience freedom, live in peace, change the world, become spirit contemporary. Join Leon Fontaine, world-renowned conference speaker, senior pastor of Canada's fastest growing church and CEO of Canada's only Christian TV station. Today on The Spirit Contemporary Life. We need to understand that you don't have a money problem. You have a wisdom problem. You don't have a marriage problem. You have a wisdom problem. You don't have a romantic problem. It's a wisdom problem. In John 10.10, 10, it says that Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. So why is there such a disconnect between this biblical promise and how most Christians live today? Why have so many believers become spiritually weak and ineffective at sharing Jesus' message of love? The spirit contemporary life is the answer. It's being led by Holy Spirit, but in a contemporary way. It's being Jesus and demonstrating His love in ways people can understand and appreciate. Spirit Contemporary is unique for everyone. It never compromises the truth, and it never makes others feel uncomfortable. It's freeing yourself from religious constraints and walking freely in God's amazing grace for His purpose. The Spirit Contemporary Life is absolutely crucial if the global church and her people are going to change the world. And now, from Winnipeg, Canada, Pastor Leon Fontaine. This man and his wife were talking, and he says to her, Honey, he says, I just need to talk to you for a minute. He says, When I fell down and broke my leg last winter, and it was broken so bad, I spent like, you know, two, three months in a cast up to here. He said, You waited on me hand and foot. You cooked, you cleaned. He says, And then when I took sick with malaria after our trip overseas, he said, you literally wiped my brow as I couldn't even get out of bed for the weeks that were there. He said, you know, when I lost my job, and he says, and I was struggling with my self-worth and all the thoughts that came through my head, he said, you were there to encourage me and to prop me up and honey. And, and she goes, yes, yes, I'm leaving you. What? You're just bad luck. We have a tendency, you guys, to always blame someone else for the issues that are going on in our life. And I want to talk today, and my title is about wisdom that builds family, wisdom that builds home, because whatever you're not working on isn't growing. We tend to have this kind of holistic thing that we'll get married and I'm naturally going to be a great husband. I'm going to be naturally a great dad. She's naturally going to be a great woman, great wife. She's naturally going to be a great mother. We're both naturally going to be great lovers. It's just going to be wonderful. And uh, eh, not how it happens. It takes work, and you need to work on things. And so we've got, for every mile of truth, we've got two miles of ditch. In one ditch, we've got people who don't believe in God or miracles. Everything is by the work, your hard work. And if you are a Christian, you're kind of a cessationist, which means you don't believe God does miracles anymore. So he kind of just comforts us as we go through our hard lives. And then we got this group on the other side. They're so charismatic and Pentecostal, and they're thinking that everything's a miracle. God miraculously got me a wife, miraculously got me a job. When I pray, God heals my marriage. When I pray, he raises my kids. And, and they're just so far over. You know, you can't give your kids to God. He gave them to you to look after. You can't say, oh, God, my wife is such a pain. I'm just going to give her to you. No, he gave her to you. You look after her. And so whatever we're not working on, you're going to find that that's the area that you struggle with. And I was reading in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, and I found this verse that shocked me. And I'll read it to you in a minute. It literally says that if you do not gain wisdom in the areas of life, that when your calamities, your storms, when hard situations rise in your life, it says wisdom will laugh at you. 
And I thought, God, that does it. you're that mean? And then it says, and not only that, wisdom will mock you when you go through hard times. I thought, God, you, you can't be that mean. But he's not saying God's going to do that to you. He's saying wisdom. And that it takes wisdom to build health, wisdom to build a relationship, wisdom to raise kids, wisdom to take a marriage past just the first season of marriage. There are gorgeous seasons ahead of you that just get better and proceed. And yet people will just plateau and wonder and then pray, God, fix my marriage. God, fix my husband. God, fix my wife. And we're in error. Let me read you this incredible scripture to you. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 to 33. It says, wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open square. She cries out in the chief concourses. At the openings of the city gates in the city, she speaks her words. Now, let's stop right there for a minute. This is not a negative message that's trying to put anybody down. I want to show you how incredibly loud and present wisdom is. That it's shouting at you. It's coming at you. It's trying everything it can to get your attention, saying, listen to wisdom, listen to wisdom, listen to wisdom. And God's not trying to hide his wisdom. He's not burying it so it takes 40 months of meditation and deep, you know, you know looking at. No, wisdom is crying at you, saying, hey, I'll help make you a better husband, better marriage. I'll help you make more money. I'll help you raise your kids. I'll help help you laugh and love life wisdom is crying aloud at us then it goes on to say she'll say how long you simple ones will you love simplicity there are some people who just don't want anything to get complicated I got news for you that might be a okay single approach to life but it doesn't work in marriage Another thing it says is that for scorners delight in their scorning. Some people will just make fun of God's word, make fun of church, make fun of the fact that there is a God. It, it literally says here that fools hate knowledge. There is a kind of person out there who literally will mock anybody who wants to learn and to grow. Read a book, hey, what you doing, dude? Oh, you're trying to think you're smart. Hey, like it's amazing how many people are intimidated when someone wants to learn grow, go to courses, try to increase, to become better, etc. But wisdom is crying out. It says, turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. God's not hiding wisdom. He wants to share it with you. So you are wise in all these areas. Because I've called and you refused, I've stretched out my hand, no one regarded because you disdained my counsel would have none of my rebuke i also will laugh at your calamity i will mock when your terror comes when your terror comes like a storm and destruction comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you then they will call on me but i will not answer they will seek me diligently but they will not find me because they hated knowledge did not choose the fear of the lord they would have none of my counsel despised by every rebuke therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way be filled to the full with their own fancies for the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. And whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. I love those last two lines. You see, God is saying to us so clearly that I'm making this easy. My wisdom is crying out loud. It's trying to get your attention. It wants you to don't stay simple. Don't mock God's word. Don't look at things and go, yeah, right. So many people today will look at God's word and laugh or mock. I mean, I've heard other people when they're going through storms, like raising kids and marriage, probably going, well, I wish there was an instruction manual for life. There is. It's called the Bible. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth <laughs> it's it's got everything in there now i don't mean like everything there's lots of great other reads and things you can learn so you want to be seeking after wisdom but god's word is very unique to have a relationship with him he wants you to have a great life 
You know, people don't like church because a lot of times they go and we seem to magnify suffering and we seem to make everyone think you never know what God's going to do. God's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. That's baloney. God's word is his oath. God's word is his promise. He says so clearly, I, Jesus and I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants everything in your world to succeed. He doesn't go, get married and hope it fails. He doesn't say, hey, start a career and I hope I just fail. Well, I'm going to have kids and I hope I fail at parenting. Well, I'm going to have a marriage, and I hope I fail at marriage. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yet when you really walk out some people's doctrines, well, God's going to make you suffer, and you know this is a hard life down here, but one day in the sweet by and by, you'll get to go to heaven. Live like hell down here. But No, his blessing, his word is here, and he wants you to get to know him. Give your life to him, and then he wants to show you how to really live. He'll show you how to have a marriage that grows every year of your life. How to raise kids that the Bible says will be so powerful they're like arrows in the, in, that, in the bow of a mighty man just launched into life. You don't want your kids to kind of find their way. You want to launch them into life. You look at the promises of God's word and how it works on raising kids and marriage and even grandparents and business and career, mental health, physical health. You'll be stunned at the wisdom that is in here. Now, there are principles that are universal, meaning that whether you're a Christian or not, whether you've got faith or not, there are principles the Bible teaches that just work on everybody. It rains on the just and the unjust. There's just some things that, you know, everybody's affected by the law of gravity. It has nothing to do with your faith. Obey gravity. Obey the law of lift and thrust. You know, you can go build an airplane and fly it. But every time you take it up into the, into the air, the gravity is going to test it. And if you make it wrong, it'll crash it. You can go build your own boat. And every time you put it in the water, water will test that boat. It's not God doing stuff to you. It's not God allowing stuff to you. It's this sovereignty of God doctrine is so crazy as though God's going to break his word to cause hell into your life because you need to learn something. His spirit and his word are so powerful. He doesn't have to mess you up. But in life every day, just walking onto the streets, you're going to have to learn and grow. So this wisdom is crucial. There's a stunning verse in Proverbs 18.9. I'm going to read it to you in the Amplified because it says it pretty brutally. It says, he who is loose and slack in his work is brother to him who destroys. Let's just stop right there. This, this is the second part I want to get to, but this is important. If you treat something loosely and just slackly, it says it's going to get destroyed. Treat your spouse with just a loosely, ah, she loves me, and yeah, she's my cross to bear. Good old, my wife, yeah, my wife, yeah, she's a good old girl. Like, just be slack in being a husband, and your marriage will be destroyed. Just get slack at raising your kids, and just loosely, oh, yeah, well, they'll be fine. They got their iPads, and they're 12 now, so I'm just, you know, Anything that you are loose or slack with, your career, your job, your mental health, your relationship with God, it says that you are now brother to him who destroys. It's going to be destroyed. That requires a certain amount of positive pressure, this moving and building and learning wisdom and this appreciation. That's why thankfulness is at the key of every happy person I know. Everybody who's happy, no one's life is perfect, but to be thankful for your spouse is to want to work on it. To be thankful for your kids is to learn, to grow, to go to courses, to read books. To be thankful for, for your job, your career, is to honor the people who own that company and to want to do your best. God's Word has amazing principles. Now, the next line says this, And he who does not use his endeavors to heal himself, his brother to him who commits suicide. Now, I've had loved ones take their own lives, so I'm not joking around about suicide at all. I'm just showing you that some of the most brilliant translators of the Amplified Bible were trying to make this say what they were trying to say, and they're literally saying that in your life, you need to endeavor to grow, to change, and that you must use every endeavor you can think of uh, to succeed, to get past the barriers, the, the storms that are holding you back. Just every, And if you don't, 
you are a brother to him who commits suicide. It is telling us that within you is an ability to find wisdom. Within you is an ability, this endeavor. You know, Holy Spirit, I'm in the process of writing a book right now called The Helper. And it's about Holy Spirit because people so misunderstand him. Everyone says something like, I'm led by the Spirit of God. Yes, we are. But then why is Holy Spirit called the helper? He's not called the leader. Well, it's because when you look at what Holy Spirit does, he's not going to force you to be a good husband, force you to be a good mom, force you to succeed. He's there to help you. And it takes your initiative, your endeavors, your gaining wisdom. It takes you moving forward, this sense of learning and growing, and, and this courage. It takes you. And then Holy Spirit is right there with you. You know, and he's, he's helping the very work of your hands. He's your helper. Good Lord, if God is your helper, then it's amazing. We need to understand that you don't have a money problem. You have a wisdom problem. You don't have a marriage problem. You have a wisdom problem. You don't have a romantic problem. It's a wisdom problem. When you study the book of Proverbs and you begin to find the incredible things that this man wrote under the inspiration of God to give you and I wisdom, this wisdom will take you through every storm, every calamity, everything that pushes at you. You can't just sit around praying for a miracle. There are kind of four quadrants to life. And the lowest one is called survival mode. When something in your life is in survival mode, you are in a panic, you are struggling, the water is up to your nose as you tread it, and any little ripple is going to put you under. And is your career like that? Is your health like that? Mental health, your marriage, your kids, your, fa- your family. Whatever area of your life is in survival mode, it's barely surviving. These are the times when we go, pray for me. Someone pray for me. Oh, I need, if, if something doesn't happen, I'm going to lose my wife. I'm going to lose my husband. I'm going to lose my, I'm going to lose my business, my career. You're in survival mode. Now, here's where you need miracles. If you keep saying to me every month, pray for me, I need a miracle to make my marriage work. Next month, pray for me, I need a miracle to get my marriage together. Five months, six months, seven months, eight months, nine months, it's still pray, I need a miracle. Dude, you got a problem. You see, you don't need a miracle, you need wisdom. Wisdom, godly wisdom moves us out of survival mode into stability. And you got to go, oh, my business is stable. My marriage is stable, or my mind is stabilizing, whatever arena. But if someone says, hey, how's your marriage, Leon? And I go, it's stable. It's not a real compliment. So the third move you need to make is out of stability into success. I'm telling you, stability was great, but when something in your life begins to succeed, more than enough, an overflow, your marriage is full of laughter and joy and romance and great sex and great friendship, it's a whole nother level. Your business, your finances, your mental health, your physical health, it's amazing. If you've lived in pain, for those who have, and those, you don't know what it's like if you haven't lived in day, daily pain after pain, to have that pain go and that body be healed. Oh, that's just, it stabilizes and it grows to success. But if you stay in success mode, that's too selfish. The fourth season, the fourth area is called significance. And that is where you begin to get your eyes off of all your successes and you go, I want to help others. Nobody is significant just because they're rich. Nobody is significant just because they're at the top of the heap. We choose significance by using the success that we have to teach, to help, to bless others. And I want you to understand that this issue of wisdom, there's there's someone listening to me right now. You've been praying, 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 God, do something, God, 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 oh God, you can cry, your mascara will run, and nothing's happening. It's because you don't need to keep praying for a miracle You need to begin to learn, to grow in wisdom. Where is wisdom? It's shouting aloud from a book that you should have picked up when you had the chance. It's shouting aloud from a Tuesday night course that we're running in the church and you don't have time to go to. Usually, it's all the greatest marriages that go to marriage conferences. 
When we do business conferences, I notice all the successful business people come. I'm going, why do the successful people come? Who to, because that's why they're successful. They keep going and keep learning and keep growing and keep gathering wisdom. Wisdom is crucial. And I want to challenge you to make sure that you build your life on the wisdom of God. Maybe church or your TV preacher or some person in your world turns you off to church or to the Bible, but I want you to understand that that's them. You know, just because they've got hell's angels riding motorbikes doesn't mean I can't ride a motorbike. Okay? Like, why do we throw the baby out with the bathwater? Well, I know so-and-so, and he was a Christian. Hey, I could do every, like, I know so-and-so who was a cook, and someone got poisoned. I know someone who was a police. Like, everybody can say stuff like that. But make sure you understand that the wisdom of God on how to live on this planet was known by God and placed into his word. And the starting point for all wisdom is an incredible reverence to God, his word to have a relationship with him. And yes, there's great books out there on whatever career that you want to get into. But when it comes to wisdom, we've got to understand that it's wisdom that builds our lives. If there's an area of your life that is not growing and you've been praying and you're hoping for God will change it, maybe what God is doing is sending you wisdom and you haven't noticed it. I'll tell you an old joke that I've told for years, as many other pastors have. George is a praying man, always believing for miracles. And in the great flood here in Winnipeg, a number of decade or two ago, um, his house started the flood, and, and a guy came along in a canoe, a neighbor, and said, George, the flood is rising. Hop in the canoe. And George said, oh, no, I'm praying. I'm believing God for a miracle. God's going to save me. So he refused. The guy in the canoe went off. A little while later, he's on his roof because the water, he's in such a low area, and the water is almost covering his roof. He's standing on the roof, and a Coast Guard cutter comes driving over there saying, George, jump in the boat. The water is rising. And George says, oh, no, I have faith in God. I've been praying God's going to do a miracle. God's going to save me. They finally gave up. They had so many other people, and they left George. George is now up the, the, te- the television pole, you know, and he's at the top, and the whole roof is covered, and a helicopter comes and says, George, George, and it throws down a ladder. Come, grab the ladder. Climb up, George. The water is still rising, and George says, it's okay. I'm trusting God. I'm believing God for a miracle, and finally they couldn't make him. They flew off. The water rose above the TV uh, tower, and he drowned. He stands before God, and he says, God, what is with you? I prayed. I'm believing for a miracle, and you let me die down there. God says, George, I sent you a canoe. Then I sent you a Coast Guard cutter. Then I sent you a helicopter, and you can't even see me trying to help you? I wonder in your life, The times you've made simple little... Have you ever made a little decision that affected the rest of your life? I think there are many times God's trying to bring wisdom through a friend saying, this was a great book that helped our marriage. Or, you know, I've got strong kids, and I I went to this course on Tuesday night at spring. Man, did it help me. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we hear, and it's like wisdom is crying out to us. Pick up this book. Come to this course. Get up. And instead of going, we tend to turn aside. Stop waiting for a miracle and instead take every endeavor you can to learn and to grow. You know, one of the things that all of us deal with is doubt. I believe the enemy has an ability to shoot doubt at us, to question what we're believing, to question that our life is good, we're doing good. And he often does it with questions like, are you happy? Um, Is this the right person for you? Are you in the right church? Could you do better somewhere else? He just knows how to take someone who is in the middle of doing well and enjoying things and just cause you to doubt 
or if you're in the middle of a miracle that you're believing God for. It's like he, when he talked to Eve and said, did God really say? He just questions everything. If you find your mind questioning things all the time, it might not be you. It might be the enemy has found a way to shoot these thoughts and these questions that cause you to doubt everywhere. I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that their mind would be renewed by the Word of God. That, Father, that shield of faith would rise up. And every time a question comes that's trying to steal their joy, to steal their miracle, I pray in Jesus' name it would hit the shield of their faith and fall to the ground useless. Father, I thank you right now that you're building them up on their most holy faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. It's no accident that you watch today's show. You are special and you have a destiny to fulfill. Our media ministry reaches some of the darkest corners of the world and your support is what makes this possible week after week. You are vital. You can change a life. Act today 